Last year, I turned this old trailer into my very own tiny home on wheels. And this summer, I transformed that empty box into a cozy, functional off-grid living space. And I couldn't be happier with the results. Whoa, you built this? And the crazy thing is, I did all this with no construction experience. I just taught myself everything off YouTube. So without further ado, let's turn this tiny house into a tiny home. I spent the entire winter thinking up that line. I uh, hope you liked it. So the first thing I needed to do is build an exterior box to house solar components because Ow. I didn't want those taking up any of the sweet, sweet space inside. And I used a lot of the same materials I did for the house itself, like cedar siding and metal roofing because I wanted to make sure this box stayed consistent with the rest of the build. And the end result is a beautiful, accessible space to store the electrical parts. <laughs> a square? Bro, that's a triangle. On the roof, I'm mounting four of these 180 watt new power solar panels, which will give me a total of 720 watts. And I'm wiring the panels in series instead of parallel because that'll stack up the voltage and keep the amperage low. And the wires are gonna enter the roof through this little thing called a gland. I hate that. Did a biology teacher name all these construction terms? We got the membrane on the windows. Now we have the gland. That's disgusting. Next, I needed to install the floor, and for this, I ended up going with this vinyl that has the same look and feel as wood. This stuff is kind of like a big, boring jigsaw puzzle, but it made this thing already feel so much more homey. Regardless of where I put this thing, insulating it is going to be super important. First off, I'm going to insulate it with a layer of this foam, and then I'm going to insulate it with a layer of this fiberglass stuff that seems to be sponsored by the Pink Panther himself. I don't know if this is made from real or artificial Pink Panthers, but it'll get the job done either way. One problem I'm running into is on each side I have these metal wheel wells, and they have no insulating value. I might as well just have a big gaping hole in the bottom of each side because the heat's just going to fly out of there. So to fix that, I'm making this little enclosure to hold some insulation and make it nice and toasty in here. Then I started putting in the electrical parts. And I know everything that's going on back here looks complicated, so let me just give you a little summary. So from the solar panels, the wires are gonna run down to the charge controller, which will regulate the voltage down to 12 volts, so it's usable by the battery. This battery is a 300 amp hour lithium self-heating battery. This battery is the powerhouse of the tiny home. And then the battery connects to these bus bars, which are just kind of extensions of the battery terminals that a bunch of different things can connect to. And then from there, the battery is connected to the 12 volt fuse box and then that fuse box goes to all the 12 volt appliances throughout the tiny home. The battery is also connected to this big boy up here which is the inverter and we're matching today. One of us is gonna have to change and this inverter supplies 120 volt AC power throughout the home. This will power the outlets and such. And as a cherry on top I put this nice little battery monitor over here and I can actually connect it to Bluetooth and see what the battery's at with my phone so that's convenient. All right. <laughs> Out of frame, forgot I'm slender man. So to wire the house, I'm using this pretty standard 12 gauge house wiring. I'm gonna wire this pretty much exactly like you would a normal house just to get the experience and learn how to do it. You never know when I'll wanna build a house that is in coffin size. So I put four different outlets in here. One at the back of the shelves, one up in the loft, one at the base of the work area, and one above the kitchen. I also put in these light boxes so I can install some Edison bulbs later and be a certified hipster. This thing should be able to entirely run off solar, but just in case the need arises, is I'm putting some RV hookups on the side. This right here is a 30 amp RV plug. And this will just go straight into the charger inverter, which will then charge up the battery. And I'm also putting in a little RV water hookup deal. Um, I actually don't know anything about how the water system will work yet. I'll, I'll learn about that next week, but yeah. And you might think it sounds stupid to do all this electrical work on my own with no experience, but it also is stupid. Good news is my dad's actually an electrical engineer, so he's gonna take a look at it and make sure I don't burn this thing to the ground. Looks like you did everything correctly. Wow, that's surprising. On the last video, I got a million comments from people who were like, Ooh, David is painted black. It's gonna be an oven. This is bad, bad, bad. Big bad. Terrible. Ah. But if you follow any tiny home page on Insta, like half the houses on those pages are black, and I feel like someone would stop doing it if they were really that bad, so I'm still hopeful. The next thing I'm gonna do is install this 12 volt fan from Max Air to help circulate air and keep it cooler on the inside. I was trying to decide where to put the fan, and after a good long think, I decided right here is the perfect spot. This is just a good high centralized place that doesn't really ruin the vibe on the inside and looks pretty good on the outside. I really like this fan because it has this waterproof door that automatically closes if it's raining. The thing is made for RVs, but it works perfectly for our boy right here. A girl, <laughs> whatever. You never know, it's 2022. 
So now it's time to build the stairs and the storage area that's gonna go under the stairs and the back half of this loft. And you might think I have nothing planned for that because I planned like nothing in this thing. But for this, I actually have some well thought out plans that you can see here on this sticky note. Yeah, I'm something of an architect myself. Oh gosh. So I started building the cabinets with three quarter inch plywood and the plans I drew up on a sticky note 10 minutes prior. All right, all done with the first stair. This stair would actually double as a chair, just in case you need an extra place for someone to sit at dinner. I mean, it works as long as you don't got that big of a dump truck. Guess we're not having any big booty babes over for dinner. <laughs> and just like that, the skeleton of the cabinets is complete. Let's talk about cabinets. So first off, we got these stairs right here with storage underneath. Check. Done. Then in this dark abyss over here, we have this big area, which is going to be a closet. And there's going to be a doobly hoobly running across here that you can like hang hangers on and stuff. Yeah, it's smaller than a usual closet, but this is smaller than a usual house. And then here we're going to have two drawers and here we're going to have three drawers. And then right here we have these two open shelves. That'll be really good to put camera gear in. And then we got the outlet up here so we can charge some drone batteries. Okay, this is where I learned a new technique that Bob the Builder himself would envy. And that's these hella clean dado cuts I put into these pine boards. I thought dados were extinct. And then I cut out rectangles of quarter inch plywood and put it all together to have a nice front for all the cabinets. I'm actually really surprised with how this turned out. If I saw this in Home Depot, I would be like, yep, that's a budget cabinet door. I put these things on hinges, added handles, and the closet was set. Now it's time to work on drawers, which I made out of three quarter inch plywood. I pretty much just built a box. Uh, call this a YouTuber boxing match. And there we have it, our very first drawer. Or as we say here in Wyoming, drawer. Yeah, we might have grizzly bears and like 12 residents, but we're not that different, all right? Then I mounted the box on some sliders and got to work on the rest of the drawers. And when I tell y'all this was tedious, you don't even know. This took me literal days and you get a nice little montage. I built a brand new drawer and another one and another one and another one at night. Another one. For the backs of the cabinets, I got this especially fancy red aromatic cedar. Cedar? I hardly know her. Not only does this stuff smell heavenly, but it's a natural insect repellent, so I don't have to worry about creepy crawlies in the cabinets. And I genuinely don't know how I didn't mess this up, but the cabinets are done, fools. The next step in this tiny home process is something I have been so looking forward to from the very beginning. And that next step is putting on the interior planking. So for the interior planking, I'm gonna be using this Pacific Naughty Cedar stuff from Home Depot as featured on every single Van Life Girls Instagram ever. All right, let's crack this bad boy open. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that feels like a drug. I'm like one of those people who sniff dry erase markers. Starting in the loft, I laid out cedar one board at a time. All the meanwhile listening to podcasts and experiencing way more back pain than I should be at my age. In the roof, I drilled out little holes for 12 volt LEDs that all got wired together in parallel and run to a dimmer switch at the side of the bed. And of course, I had to make a bunch of special little notches and pieces to fit the shape of the ceiling. These triangles right here were definitely my favorite. Look at this! This is so satisfying! This thing deserves to be hanging in the Louvre. I'm just messing with ya, I know it's pronounced Louvre. Putting the cedar together is just like playing with Lincoln Logs on expert mode. My five-year-old self would have been so proud of what I'm doing. Look at him go. As more and more cedar went up, this thing started looking more and more like an actual house. It's crazy just how far we've come from the days when it was an old rusty trailer. I also put cedar on the underside of the loft and equipped it with some 12 volt lights so I can see what I'm doing when I'm at the desk area and around the closet. And then the loft was complete, and it was looking like something out of your grandma's cottage. Looking over this loft, there are so many imperfections, but that's actually something I really like about this. It doesn't feel like it was built by a machine or 3D printed. It has so many imperfections that you can tell it was made by a human, and I kind of like that, you know? If you can't tell, I'm not a very bougie person, but the one place where I was very bougie is picking out the mattress. My nest, if you will. And if you won't... So this is a really nice memory foam mattress from Lucid. And by really nice, I mean they had a few good reviews on Amazon. Let's put all the sheets and stuff on. I made it nice and cozy up here. I put in some blankets. I put in pillows. And I have another surprise for you guys. Three, two, one. Boom, we have fairy lights. If you built a tiny home and didn't put any fairy lights in there, you did it wrong. Tiny homes need fairy lights just like humans need a pancreas. That's the weirdest freaking analogy I've ever made, but ain't it the truth. So now that my loft is nice and cozy, 
Let's keep building a tiny home. So right here below the window is gonna be a nice little spot for the kitchen sink stove area. And then in the corner back here, I'm putting in a shower. So this is the shower pan I'm using. It's 24 by 36 and it'll do a good job. And I just drilled the drain straight out the bottom of the trailer. I could add on a gray water tank later if I need it. I was kind of worried about the opening to the shower being too narrow, so let's test it out. Oh yeah. This is actually way more spacious than I imagined. You got room to do all the scrub-a-dub-dubs. And next, it's time to build the frame for the kitchen, starting with the water tank. So this is the fresh water tank I'm using, and it's 42 gallons. So it's kind of like having a gallon of milk, but 42 times that, and there's no milk. In this water tank, there's four different connections. The first is an output to the water pump for use. The second is a nice little valve to let the tank breathe. The third is a drain that goes out the bottom, and the last is an input from the hose that runs through this pipe I put in the floor. And with that, all set, I put plywood on the wall behind the tank and switched out of plumber mode and into carpenter mode to finish framing the kitchen. And I had to do some thinking because this frame had to hold lots of pieces in a small area, like the fridge. So what do y'all think? Is this gonna hold up the fridge? I mean, to be real, I didn't even think we were gonna get this far, so your guess is as good as mine. So this is the fridge I'm using. It's uh, black and it looks like it'll keep stuff cold. That's literally everything I know about it. It actually works. I'm so stoked. Then it was time to build drawers again, which is terrible because I've already done five of these. I built two more boxes to put in the kitchen above the fridge and mounted them to soft clothes sliders. I also built more drawer fronts using the same dodo cuts as earlier, I don't know, whatever they're called. This actually looks pretty good, which is weird because I built it. And of course, I made a weird bottom drawer for pots and pans because what house doesn't have that? Okay, voiceover David needs to go get water. Here's me from like three oh, months ago. I look like a dang washed up manatee right now. All right, so I'm installing the plumbing right now and just jamming all the bits and pieces under the sink in an unorganized disaster. So let's talk about what everything does. So from the water tank, the water's gonna go to this 12 volt pump that keeps the whole system pressurized and automatically turns on when you're using the sink or shower. Then the water's gonna go to the accumulator tank. I know nothing about what this does, but I hear it's important. It's kind of like the government. Then the water's gonna go to the water filter, which will make sure I don't die. Then water goes straight from here to the cold input lines of the sink and shower. Then to get hot water, we'll go through this tankless water heater, which through the power of propane will turn ice cold water into nice hot shower sauce. Then for piping, I'm using this Propex tubing. It's this really flexible, strong tubing that's so much fun to put together. You put a ring around the dealy hoo and you clamp it down with this thing. I don't even know what this is, but it looks like something from Transformers. I haven't seen that movie. So from the water tank, it's gonna go up and over to the water pump, around to the accumulator, over to the water filter, out the water filter, and then either to the propane water heater or the cold lines for the sink and shower, and then the hot water will go to the hot lines for the sink and shower. So I thought about a lot of different possibilities when it came to heat, and I finally landed on this Chinese diesel heater. These are so good for tiny living because one, they're small, two, they're really cost effective, they don't use a whole lot of diesel, and three, okay, there's just two. I put the diesel tank for the heater up here in the shower wall. There'll be a little cabinet right here you can open to refill the diesel. Then the diesel is pumped down into the heater and the exhaust and air intake just go right out the wall. Alright, Papa's gonna try out the diesel heater because Papa's cold. That's me. I'm Papa. Can somebody tell me why this thing is smoking? Get it, bro. You vape. Okay, I think I found the problem. So the exhaust pipe melted the tube. That's not good. But then I reorganized things and it worked just fine. And of course, since I'm using a diesel heater, I'm also installing a carbon monoxide detector to prevent death. All right, it's now time to put in the butcher block counter, but this thing's really heavy. So first, it's time for a workout. Now it's time to butcher the butcher block. I cut this thing to size and then cut out holes for the sink and the stove. It ended up fitting perfectly, which is surprising, but I'm really glad it did because that would have been an expensive mistake. Have you ever met a family with one of these sinks that hasn't absolutely made it in life? Yeah, me neither. This is a propane stove from Dometic and I love it because it doesn't require an electrical connection. It's got a little zapper right here, see? Buzz buzz. <laughs> oh gosh, are we building cabinets again? You guys are probably so tired of watching me build cabinets. I, I swear I'm almost done. But for real, these just took so long to make. I have a newfound respect for cabinet makers. And I also had to drill a hole for the heater to pop through and deliver the good stuff. And then I got to work on the shower, starting off by running the piping through the walls, and then I covered the walls in quarter inch plywood. We're making progress, y'all. So I thought for the shower it'd look great to paint it this nice bubblegum pink. 
I think it really matches the rustic aesthetic I'm going for in here. I'm totally joking. You should have seen the look on your face. <laughs> this is Red Guard, and it's like a waterproofing membrane for showers. It looks like this project sponsored by Pepto-Bismol. We have something much nicer to put over top of this. <laughs> I decided to cover the shower walls in wood planking, which obviously requires a pretty good amount of waterproofing. First, I slathered the boards up in a water sealant like they were baby back ribs, and I was a southern dad. And after drying, I started running them all up and down the shower walls putting them as tightly together as possible. And yes, I did this part at night because you already know that tiny home grind never sleeps. I'm a hustler. Then I drilled a hole for the shower knob, which low-key kind of looks like it belongs in a haunted house. Spooky. Then I connected the hot and cold water lines and drilled a hole for the shower head. And it looked pretty vibey. Alright, so I've got a gripe that we need to address in the tiny home build. Lord Farquaad is the CEO of the shower industry. And 80% of showers I have to duck down like this to get clean. So we are going to make a proper tall boy shower in the tiny home. Yeah, scrub a dub dub, my dudes. And then I put a 12 volt light in the shower and started covering the walls in a marine grade spar varnish, the type of stuff they use on boats. And I filled all the cracks with silicone. About time to crack open a cold one. Dude, these go so hard. Okay, at this point I started kicking it into absolute goblin mode because winter was a coming. It was late September at this point, which in Wyoming means it could start snowing any day. This place is crazy. Finishing up the cedar was actually really stressful because you can only get the stuff at Home Depot and the nearest one is two hours away. But the good news is I had just enough on deck to get it finished. Dude, it looks so good. I did not think it would actually come together like this. This is so exciting. <laughs> And then I put in the Edison bulbs, which are the only AC lighting I had in this entire build. And I'm so happy I put these things in. They made this tiny home feel like a trendy Seattle coffee shop. And I have one more finishing touch that is my favorite thing in this entire tiny home. The earth. I'd like to apologize to the entire country of New Zealand. Y'all unfortunately didn't make the cut. I actually got this off Etsy from a company in Italy, so thanks to them. And then it was time to furnish my new place. It's actually a crazy story how I got this desk. You see, I was scuba diving off the coast of Florida and I actually recovered it from a sunken pirate ship. Some say Blackbeard himself used this very desk and it's cursed to this day. I'm just messing with you, I bought it at Walmart. And I put a carpet under the desk area just to make it feel a little more warm and homey. It's a nice added touch. I had to drive two hours to Walmart for this chair. This feels like a really productive workspace. I'm gonna edit some sick videos here, including this one. So I actually had some Instagram followers suggest that I cover the stairs and carpet, and that sounds like a nice cozy idea. So I got this really nice fluffy rug, and I'm gonna cut it into squares and put those on the stairs. That rhymed. Watch out Eminem, I'm coming for your brand. This carpet will keep Papa's little piggies nice and warm. Very cozy. When I post a B-reel today, I'm not gonna include this plant, because this thing is as fake as it gets. It's a fake plant. And of course, I put a Keurig in here because your boy loves his coffee. I can already hear the coffee snobs griping in the comments. My guy, you're not cooler than anyone else just because your coffee was seven times harder to make. I like my coffee how I like my soul. Black. This is a metal print of a photo I took while I was living with a Maasai tribe in Kenya. We were right below Kilimanjaro and there were just giraffes and elephants and it was such a magical experience. I'm hanging this up right in the entryway. It's all time to test out the water, so the first thing we're gonna do is connect the hose. Where the hose at? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> I like to do my, like little awkward bits and stuff like that in there. People love that. I love it. And my heart was racing right here because I didn't even know if this was gonna work. You can hear the tank filling up. Moment of truth, I'm turning on the water. Pump. <laughs> That's the word. Oh. Alright, first thing to do is test out the sink. We have water, look at that. All right, last thing to test out is the shower. Scrub a dub dub. Oh. <laughs> that is a nice hot shower. Gonna test out the stove real quick, whip up some breakfast. One nice thing about this setup is I can just put the propane outside and change it up whenever I need. And this right here is my go-to breakfast because my culinary skills are questionable at best. Bone app the teeth. I know what you're asking. David, 
where are you gonna have your pee pee poo poo time? And that's a valid question because like many of you, I go pee pee and I go poo poo. The answer is I'll probably end up putting a composting toilet right here in the shower. They're waterproof and clean and super easy to install. I just haven't put one in yet, sue me. And just like that, after two summers of working on this thing, it's finally complete. All right, so now that the build's complete, let's break down the cost. As discussed in the last video, the exterior costed about eight grand, including the trailer. And between lumber, solar, electrical, appliances, and all the other gadgets and gizmos, the interior costed right around seven grand for a total price of 15,000. And I know that might sound like a lot, and don't get me wrong, it totally is. But until you actually try to build something like this, you don't realize just how many costs go into building a usable living space. I mean, just the solar components costed about four grand, so that's that's half the cost right there. But here's the crazy thing. My last video about the tiny home ended up getting nearly 5 million views, and the AdSense revenue from that video ended up paying for this entire project and then some. That's a pretty big return on investment for such a tiny house. Gosh, look at me talking about return on investment. What am I, Graham Stephan? So what's next? I'm actually currently working on finding a piece of land to put the tiny home on so I can get it set up as an Airbnb and share it with you guys. Anyways, getting this tiny home set up as an Airbnb is a story for another video. In the meantime, I'm just gonna keep traveling, cracking bad dad jokes, and making videos. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to come along for the journey. So now I guess there's only one thing left to do. Invite the boys over for a house party. A tiny one. A tiny house party. <laughs>